The fact of the matter is, whether you've been in network marketing for years or just a few days, your family and friends have seen your opportunity and your phone is, as we call it, burnt. If you're anything like me, that's a scary thought. So the big question is, how do entrepreneurs like us, who love the network marketing profession, who no longer want to be that guy and are tired of convincing people during uncomfortable let's get coffee meetings where they say, what's this all about? How do we market in a way that aligns us with our dream clients and expands our network of upfront and transparent professionals, allowing us to get our time back, our families back, and gain a real passive asset? People like us who value impact over income, we deserve to see our visions once and for all. Join me in this podcast where we'll uncover just how to do that. My name is Eric Sablon. Welcome to Burnt Phone Marketing. On screen here, there you are, Eric. Right. I have to, um, I know you're recording right now. I have to, I have to pause that. Yeah. Hey guys, what's going on? Eric Sablon here with Burnful Marketing. I'm super excited. I actually have a juggernaut in the music industry. He's done so many things. He actually started off in real estate at 19. He was a full-time teacher. He's running his own production company. And if you catch the YouTube side, you'll see how awesome the backdrop is. And this is real deal. This is like a real deal place. So he did a network marketing as a side hustle, but literally has taken it to the next level. Um, he's finding a niche in uh, marketing and network marketing. So it's, it's, it's really cool. He actually was just at the Grammys last, a, a couple weeks ago. So guys, if you're here, if you're listening to this uh, recent, the Grammys just happened. If not, you know, this guy's been everywhere. He's a, he's definitely someone that you want to follow. So please welcome Fabian Brown to the show. I'm super excited to have you on board. Eric, man, thanks for the awesome introduction, bro. Really, really appreciate that. And I'm, I'm glad, I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. Really am. Well, you know, I'm fired up. It's funny that we actually met on social media and, um, you know, it was, it was through a mutual friend of a mutual friend. And I always tell people don't sleep on social media. There's some, there's some good cats out there in social media. Um, sometimes you got to weed through some of them, but there's some really, really good ones out there. So I'm actually just going to start off the interview real quick. Give me a little bit about your backstory. I mean, I know I touched on that you were a teacher, but you know, what was the big shift between um, being a teacher and then moving into the entrepreneurial realm? Because I, I know when you hit that, when you get a taste of it, it's like over. <laughs> The funny thing is, Eric, uh, the teaching has never stopped, man. You know, the, the audience is different. You know, once upon a time used to be like, you know, little rugrats, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, fast forward, I love, you know, being able to instill and inspire, you know, people, you know, who look like me, who talk like me, who want what I want, you know, who, you know, have desires and goals, who just want to be better than what they were yesterday. Uh, so the teaching has never stopped. Um, but, yeah, I had... Uh, let's see, man, I've had uh, 15 years in the education industry, right? Um, you know, quick background, I was, uh, went to University of Arts in Philadelphia, a saxophone major. I'm a, I'm a jazz saxophonist. I'm a professional musician. And, um, you know, I just knew for me, even in college, that, you know, I was looking, to, looking at my friends, looking at my peers that were a little bit older than I was, and, you know, they were doing great things, playing with all these big name celebrities and in the recording studios and everything. Um, but at the end of the day, some of them were still living at home with mom, and, you know, some of them were still, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul to make ends meet. So even in college, I just knew that I had to, I, I had to be more than just a performer, more than just a saxophonist, right? Um, you know, like you had mentioned, I bought my first house. I was 19 years old, junior in college, dude. I had no freaking idea uh, what I was doing, you know, followed my dad's suggestions. He got into, um, into real estate. And, you know, that was the very first lesson at an early age that I was able to, you know, people were able to make money, make income without exchanging their time for, for dollars, right? You know, so I leveraged myself even early on, you know, I got a few roommates and, you know, I charged them rent, but their rent covered literally everything plus $200 in my pocket, you know, every single month, you know? So here I am 19 years old, you know, saxophone player, musician playing up and down the East coast and, um, you know, making a little pocket change on this, on this real estate thing. It really just kind of opened my eyes. 
um, you know, fast forward, I graduated college, you know, got into teaching. Uh, that really wasn't ever the goal. I never said, you know, hey, when I grow up, I want to be a teacher. Um, but dude, I loved it. You know, I loved inspiring people. And, you know, it, for me, it was much more than, um, it was much more than just music, you know, it was really putting people on a path to be the best versions of themselves, right? Because, you know, as a teacher, you discover there are some kids who have sh stronger strengths and some kids not so much, right? right. Um, we we got to love them all, but, you know, some kids are going to excel further than others, you know? So what do you do with the kids, you know, the students that, you know, maybe need a little bit more time to develop, right? You know, well, we, we inspire, we coach them, and we mentor them. Um, you know, listen, uh, from, from teaching, I met my wife, you know, she was a single mom at the time. Uh, she had two sets of twins and, and two singles, right? Uh, we connected, you know, I fell in love with, with her and her kids. Um, you know, we married and, you know, now we have 10 kids together, if you can, if you can imagine that. Um, you know, we have three sets of twins. We have four singles. The youngest is five years old uh, and the oldest is 29. And I know what you're thinking, oh, you don't even look old enough to be, you know, I'm like, yeah, dude, you know, I'm, I'm old enough. Trust me. It's the hat covers up all the grays. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, so um, family is a really big, important thing with me. And, you know, as I'm going through my teaching career, you know, I was always hustling, man. I was always playing, you know, my, my saxophone. You know, I turned my freelance gigs into, into businesses. You know, I opened up a music production company. I offered, you know, DJ services, live music performance services, photo booth services, event planning. You know, I, I've scaled that and, you know, I, I, I host huge music festivals, uh, you know, in South Jersey where we have thousands of people come you know for beer wine and music that I curate you know um, I really started looking at the music industry as well what is it that I can do other than just picking up my horn and playing what is it that I can do than just you know being in the classroom and teaching kids you know and then this crazy thing called network marketing appeared at my front door right and um, dude I had like Eric I mean, I'm not sure what your background is to the industry or not you know I, I would love to hear that actually um, for me, I didn't know anything of it. You know, I, I knew of like, you know, people going door to door song vacuums. That was probably the closest I knew about the industry. Right. Um, you know, my, my father turned me on to it. He said, Hey man, you know, you have a great network. I think you'd be good at this, you know? So long story short, you know, I, I went out to an event, you know, I brought my wife with me. I, I loved, you know, hearing what the company was about, you know, the, the, the leaders in the room. I just, I just kind of like the vibe, you know, and the specific niche that this, this company that I'm involved with in was this really specific, right? It wasn't product space. It was more service based driven. Right. Um, so it just aligned with me with what I was doing in, in real estate in both in education and music. Right. <laughs> Um, you know, I hit the ground running, you know, got some momentum. And then I quickly realized that this is a real business. Network marketing is a legit real business. And uh, you need the same thing as you do in every other business. You need, you need qualified leads. You need to be talking to qualified leads every single day if you're going to grow your business. Mm -hmm. um, so I quickly found out that even though I had momentum with my warm market, I really had to get good at, um, you know, networking and meeting other people, you know, and not being awkward or weird or spammy or salesy, you know, just coming from a genuine place and really trying to help people genuinely build an online business, right? Um, but that you don't do that by yourself. You do that by getting coaching and by getting mentoring and spending money and going to seminars and workshops. You know, you get, you get better at that by putting yourself in situations. So right. that's, uh, hopefully I'm not talking too long, but that's my story. Right. That's, in a that's nutshell. Awesome. So you know what's super funny is we're, at 19 years old, I bought my first fourplex. So <laughs> I was in a real estate gig at 19. I wasn't a teacher, so I always tell people this. I was, I'm a C student on a good day. Like on a good day, I'm a C student. So college, I mean, basically I went to school to play hockey and I was just like, if I can play hockey, if I can play sports, I'm good. But one thing that you said, one nugget that you said is you brought your wife to your first event. Now there's so many people out there and I'm, I'm actually going to just kind of die. We're going a little off script, but there's so many people out there that I did an episode, I think it was episode three with Jordan Savage, and he talked about how his network marketing, his network marketing company didn't excel until he figured out how to work with his wife. So um, what, get, can you give me a nugget like on 
what would be, what was your way that you said, you know what, hey, do me a favor, come to this event. I know it's weird. I know it could be weird because a lot of times people don't like to go to that. Um, I know it's weird. What, what would be some nuggets that you'd say to get, get the wife or the spouse on board? Spouse. Because I tell you what, once you get the spouse on board, the business blows up. That's, you know, that's a, a great question, Eric. And, you know, my answer may, may vary from others that would be asked the same question. And I was in a unique situation. My wife has always been uh, super supportive of all of my crazy ideas, right? You know, it wasn't, um, she never looked at this industry as, as negative or, you know, she never complained about, you know, me coming home late at night and getting up early in the morning and, you know, going to these conventions. She, she really was you know, supportive, and that's important, but there's a lot of people on my team who, who don't have that situation, right? Mm -hmm. And it really it comes down to results, right? If an individual is not getting results or is not doing the actions and being consistent to get the results, the spouse is going to see that. They're going to smell that a mile away, right? Mm -hmm. And then that spouse may put that that activity or that industry into a category of you're wasting your time. This is not yielding any fruits. You know, so my biggest suggestion to, to anyone to get their spouse or significant other on board is, is one, have a conversation, right? You, you have to sit down, you have to have a real authentic conversation, you know, and put some, put some time frames around your, your conversation, right? Hey, listen, babe, you know, I'm, I'm looking for 90 days here. Uh, I need three solid months for me to, to put my head down, to get to work, to get some coaching, to, to put the action into play, to put the plan into place, right? Give yourself some time frames, you know, and along those 90 days, you're in constant communication with your, with your spouse, mm -hmm. you know, asking for that support, asking for that, you know, that help and that understanding. Um, it's not going to be easy, but it's a good motivator, a good self-motivator, especially when you give yourself a specific time frame, right? It's yeah, like no. almost that, that internal pressure that we all need to push through this uncomfort zone that we tend to have sometimes. So yeah, I did the exact same thing. So my wife and I, we were in two different companies. It was weird. I, we were in two different companies and okay. um, we, went to, it, we went and we were prospecting the same person. And it was so weird. And we got in the car and my wife was like, you know what, either I'm done. Either we do one or we do the other. And I'm like, okay, totally understand. I'll give you 90 days. And there was a trip attached to that 90 days. Like literally like the 90 days was, and, and we were, we, we literally went to an event and we were like, oh, there's no way we could hit that. And I was like, I'll give you 90 days and we're going on that trip. Yeah. And that just switched network marketing for her. Like that, that literally catapulted our travel and all the things that we do now um, in the space. So it's been like, it, it took that one thing. And, and like, I love what you said, you like a real conversation. Cause when you have a real conversation with your wife, just like you're, it's, she's your business partner, just like sure. a normal business partner, you have a real conversation with them every single day. So. Well, Eric, communication is key, man, in all relationships, whether it's your significant other, whether it's your kids, whether it's your downline, whether it's your upline, I mean, geez, you know, um, communication is the key to everything and the quicker we're able to get to a place where we're comfortable and being candid with the people who we value the most that's when you get real results you know this tiptoeing and and you know dancing around the subject and being coy and passive aggressive there's there's really no space for that in business um especially if you're trying to get results and you know, for, for us, for, for my household specifically, you know, we had, you know, 10, 10 little reasons why on, uh, you know, we had to make things work. And, and, and for me, it wasn't, for me, it was about the residual income, right? Because I could, I can get side gigs and I can make extra money. That wasn't, that wasn't what I was looking for. What I was looking for was something that was, was passive and residual in, in, in right. nature, right? So, um, you know, it, it's funny because I went from completely not knowing anything about the industry to diving deep and getting really acquainted into, you know, the, the past, the present and the future of this industry. And this industry is, is a, this, I, so in 2014, I went to um, network marketing uh, GoPro with Eric Worre and oh, yeah. talked about where it was and how it was growing and how it was growing. And he put a chart up there that said it's larger than the music industry. It's larger than the um, sports industry, the sports industry. It's larger than the NFL. But the, and the thing is, is what I'm finding a lot of is it's the gateway drug to <laughs> entrepreneurship. Like network marketing is the gateway drug to entrepreneurship. 
And the I reason agree. I say that is because, you know, everybody says the cost of entry, but the biggest problem with it being the gateway drug is I've been to hundreds of network marketing funerals. I call them network marketing funerals because they tried it and they were like, oh, this doesn't work. Like I talk to my friends and family and you know, I, I don't do the whole talk to friends and family, but I talked to my friends and family and two of them said yes. And those are the only 2.3 people that I've signed up. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of that, man. I mean, you know, you, you said it. You know, the 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 price of entry, the point of entry, the it's a low barrier, right? So mm -hmm. it makes it exciting and accessible for a lot of people to do, um, which is which is cool, you know. But that's why you have the churn rate. That's why you have the turnover, right? Because those individuals, you know, it's like the lottery mentality, man. Mm -hmm. If 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 you give a person a winning lottery ticket and they win, you know, $5 million, but they still have that mindset of, uh, you know, an annual income earner of $50,000 a year, well, they're going to act as if, right? They're not going to act like a millionaire or a multimillionaire. They're going to act like, like a, like a 50,000 heir. Mm -hmm. And if an individual is not willing to put themselves in an environment to learn and to grow, um, we always need to be learning something and growing because if we're not, we're dying, right. you know? Um, and that's, that's where a lot of, um, new network marketers, that's where they fall between the cracks, man. You know, I, I'm at a point now where this conversation I'm having with you and, and having with new recruits, it's like, look, if, if you're going to dip your toe in the pool, I'm probably not the right coach for you, exactly. right? You know, this exactly. is something, and, and, we, and we come up with a whole strategy and a whole plan based on their schedule, right? I think one, one of my niches is, is working with busy parents, right? You know, so if I'm focusing, you know, my target market, for my network marketing company is extremely busy, busy, successful parents, right? You know, because I'm targeting myself, right? I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking um, to speak with people and to work with people that are going to experience the same issues and problems that I have because I've been there, right? You know, so I can, I can learn, I can teach people. Don't, no, don't, don't make a left right there. You got to make a right right here, you know? And that's good. That's big because you, you walk the path. And it's easier to uh, like, like in mentorship, it's easier to follow somebody that's already been there and that align the same things. And what's cool about that is you're having the, the same conversations that they can, aha, I do that too. Or, or yeah, that, that happened to me last week. So you're finding your, 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 the right avatar. And that's one thing that, that's one thing that I wanted to bounce off you on network marketing because you just brought it up. Sure. If you're selling to everybody, you're selling to nobody. Correct. So what would be like a nugget that you'd give uh, someone coming into the industry about okay. how to define his avatar, how to define the person that he really wants to at least start his business with? Because, you know, it's spray and pray and you know it. That's <laughs> well, no, that's, that's, a, that's a great question, you know, um, and I'll give you an example, right? So in, in the music industry, right, I work at a record label, right? And, and one, of, one, of my, one of my roles is to connect our artists, you know, with different publications, right? So, um, you know, I'm in constant contact with, you know, Billboard or Rolling Stone or Wall Street Journal or New York Times, you know, just in this marketplace and, you know, world, worldwide, right? So I have to get really good at listening to the, the music of the artist and connecting that with the specific writer and the specific publication. You know, um, NPR or Billboard magazine, they're more than likely not gonna write about an artist who's coming out with their first release, right? That's not the right target for that artist. Those publications are looking for a more well-rounded, a more senior veteran type of, of uh, musician, correct? Right. Same thing with network marketing. And I, and I think the, the biggest advice that I can give anyone, you know, even senior network marketers, people who've been in the game for a minute, but maybe have lost some momentum, um, you know, or someone who's jumped around from company to company to company, you know, my, my recommendation, you know, and this is like a, like a buffet, right? Take what you want and yeah, leave exactly. what you don't want. Like it. Um, but my recommendation is, is quite simple. You know, take a pen and a piece of paper and literally write down characteristics of people that you can see yourself working with, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, I wish I had my notebook here. For me, you know, two pages were filled with just different types of personality types, different types of things that motivated, different types of occupations, right? And then I'm looking at my list and I, and I started connecting the dots with different categories. And I made four or five categories. And, and really when I looked at that list, my, my biggest takeaway was, I'm just talking to myself. I, I literally figured that I'm literally, the, the person that I wanna work with looks and talks like me. 
You know, they, they, they set goals, they have high, you know, they're motivated by their family, you know, they have a no quit mentality, you know, they'll do whatever it takes until, you know, these are the types of characteristics that I'm looking to, to uh, connect with. You know, so when I'm putting out content, you know, th those are the type of things, that's my messaging out there, because I'm really trying to attract those types of people uh, into, into my world. Right. Um, is it, it's, it's okay to talk to friends and a fam family. I think that conversation sounds a little bit different than, to use your word, that, that avatar that you created, right? Yeah. The, the friends and family conversation, you know, is like, hey, look, I'm, I'm starting something new here. I need some social proof. I need a favor. You know, you're asking almost those people to, you know, maybe try the product as a favor just to get some, you know, some credibility early on. But no network marketer should think they're going to, you know, quit, you know, fire their boss or all these other crazy things, you know, by just talking to their warm market. That's, you know, if, if I, at this record label, if I only sold CDs to my friends and family, to my mom and dad, we would have been out of business 19 years ago, right? So you, you just have to know this, this network marketing game, you have to get good at two things, networking and marketing. It's in the title of the industry. Right. And working. Because all work. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> all right. So I'm actually going to jump back onto a little bit of the script. So um, sure. this is a marketing podcast, and I always like to to get a couple nuggets that you've used in the in the past. But sure. maybe we maybe we'll kind of um, switch it up a little bit. So you, um, what would be some? I mean, we kind of just went over it, but what would be like a couple of tips that you'd give the audience on? Um, well. I'm going to go back. You just had a, a Facebook post that had okay. massive interaction, 250 comments. Um, yeah. What advice would you give to the audience? Because a lot of them are like, they'll post something about their company and they'll get like seven likes and they're all from your company. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what advice would you give to, um, you know, a, either a seasoned network marketer or a network marketer that, their Facebook looks like a billboard and the only likes and comments that and shares that they're getting are from somebody that's already in their company. Well, this is like marketing 101 right here. This would be for you. That's yeah, that's an another solid question. You know, one thing, here's what you don't want to do. And you've alluded to this, right? You don't want to take a, you know, a, you know, a fancy picture of your product and say, Ooh, look at this beautiful bottle of vitamins. Don't you want, you know, that's one of the things that you don't want to do. That's very repelling, um, very salesy, and no one is going to, to relate to that message. No one is going to relate to the message of, you know, hey, I'm looking for two more people to, I got two more spots of people to work with. You know, it could be you. No, no one's, you know, th these are some of the old school network marketing tactics that people are bringing to the online space and they're not getting, they're not getting results because it comes off cheesy, man. Like there's no other way to say it. Right. So if I'm giving advice and this goes to any marketer, not just network yes. marketers, I really, I really feel that network marketers need to be good marketers. Right. And then no matter what company they're in, they're going to, they're going to excel in, you know, uh, but from a marketing point of view, again, you have to know who you're talking to. So mm -hmm. your message can be extremely clear right? Stop trying to talk to everyone. Stop trying to have this idea in your head that you're going to make everyone happy because you're not, you know, you, you intentionally want to repel some people, mm -hmm. right? You know, so there's sure. different types of posts that you can put, you know, you can put a, a, a leadership based post, you can put a, a, a lifestyle based type of post, you can put uh, an inquisitive, like, a, like I'm, I'm, I'm doing some market research type you know, posts. There's different different types of engagement. The bottom line is engagement, right? Yeah. So when I'm approaching my social media before I hit post, I'm thinking to myself, you know, is this gonna is this gonna encourage people to want to comment and to mm -hmm. carry an online conversation? Yes. Right. Yes. If I'm going to put something that's not going to be uh, conversational, I'm probably not going to do it. Right. You know, sometimes polarity works, right? Sometimes controversy works in your, in your post. You got to be careful with that. Right. Um, you know, I would kind of stay away from politics or religion or something like that, but, um, you know, and, and sometimes you could put posts of things that are, are relevant to the times, right? Mm -hmm. Um, as an example, you know, uh, I was recently, like you mentioned, I was out in LA for, for the Grammys. We had, uh, two artists nominated for a Grammy this year and um, it was in LA at the Staples Center and 
during the pre-telecast, we had found out that uh, this, you know, horrible tragedy of, of Kobe Bryant and his daughter mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, the, the nine other people total, the nine people total in that, in that helicopter. Right. And, you know, that gives perspective on where things are at with your life. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, intuitively without even thinking about it, you know, because we went to that Grammys, you know, we, we didn't get the, the statue like we were hoping to, to, to get and to bring home, you know, so there was a lot of negative news coming down, right? We didn't win, you know, this thing with, with, with Kobe and all these, you know, poor people. And, um, you know, so what I, what I did was I decided to use the times to use something relevant and to create a, a leadership based type post, mm -hmm. you know, where I talked about, you know, we all can't be winners, but at the end of the day, we've got to think about the bigger, the bigger picture here, right? And some of the major takeaways I had going into that week. And I'm not sure if that's the post you're even referring to, but um, that, that post got a lot of engagement too, you know, because I was authentic. I was, I was true to myself. You know, I was vulnerable, you know, with, with having this loss. You know, I was sensitive with being, you know, relatable to what was going on in the times. You know, these are just you know, marketing strategies that you can apply in your everyday conversations, but they also apply when you're posting online as well. Right. And I think that's what, I think that's what a lot of people don't, don't think about. They don't think to, to uh, wrap it. I mean, cause emotion brings everything. Um, and tragedy again, brings everything. And, um, but you know, my goal on my, on my Facebook page, and I noticed on your Facebook page is to be one of the most positive people out there. Yeah. Yeah. However, a lot of times you will get some stuff out of those negative things. But I love what you did on that post is you actually spun it to put a positive. And then as a teacher, you put tragedy, positivity, teaching, like boom, boom, boom. Like, and if you follow that framework, you're going to get a lot more interaction. And um, yeah, I, I was like literally just scrolling through your page and noticed that, that you get a lot of interaction and it's real interaction. And that's the difference. Big. And that's what makes a marketer a marketer. Not only that's, that you were at the Grammys in your life is actually pretty cool. So <laughs> it's a lot of work, man. You know, it's funny. Like I, social media also has the lens to make things like glamorous, but that's why yeah, I try exactly. to be authentic with my posts. You know, it may be like a glamorous picture, but if you read the context, there's some real stuff going on there, man. You know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, one thing that I want to ask is you've been, and it actually was one of the posts that you that you did recently. Is like. You've been an entrepreneur since basically 19. I mean, um, and what would be the one thing that you would have told yourself when you first got started in the entrepreneur space? What would be the one thing you would have told yourself that would have helped you scale your business? Mm. First thing that popped in my mind, because there's a lot of things I would have told mm -hmm. my younger self, right? But the first thing that popped in my mind is stop listening to people. Like stop... Um, um, why take advice from someone who's not where you want to be in life? Right. Right. My problem as a, as a young man was, you know, I'm a people pleaser. Like, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the network marketing world, they would call me a whale, right? I'm not a shark, you know, I'm not like really money driven and like, you know, flashy things. Um, you know, I'm not uh, an urchin where I'm like real analytical and detailed, you know, I'm not a dolphin where I'm out like, party and my wife is a complete dolphin um but you know i'm not out there partying having a good time you know i'm a whale i love everyone you know i i embrace things i'm very sensitive like that's my that's my demeanor so to a fault as i was developing as this business person as this teacher and, and as this educator to a fault i would take things really seriously and you know people's opinions really weighed heavily on me you know, until one of my coaches said, you know, you can't pay your groceries with other people's opinions. Right. Right. And once I got really comfortable with not caring what that person thought of me because I didn't desire that person's lifestyle, right. even successful people in life, right? Because network marketers, you know, they, they call it a chicken list, right? And mm -hmm. um, they say, you know, write the most successful people that you know down and, you know, give them a call and, you know, let's let them know you want their opinion, right? Well, if you go through your chicken list and if you get enough no's from your chicken list, you start to begin to doubt the industry, right? Exactly. But I would, I, I would encourage anyone that's going to, you know, this higher level person that, that you look up to let's say eric let's say me and you are sevens right on a scale of one to ten right and we're trying to 
to, to network to, you know, eight, nines and tens, right? And we're, we're hitting our tens and they're, they're shooting us down, right? That's going to get in our, in our psyche, like, but then you have to really evaluate that person's life and, and how much they work and, and, and how much time are they really spending or not spending with their family. You know, you got to look at the entire picture, not just the bank account, not just the car that they're driving or their house that they're living in. You got to look at their relationship with their wife or their husband or their relationship with their kids or their relationship with their community. So of all of that or the lack of, you know, so my biggest advice to myself would be like, dude, chill out. Who cares what so-and-so thinks about you? They're not paying your bills. You're here to do that. You know, I would, I would, I would shut down the noise, the chatter in my inner head as quickly as I can. And I got to be honest, man. It was, it was well, you know, I just turned 40. It was well into my like early thirties until I really started like being intentional about that. And even, t I'm not going to lie, bro, like even today, like sometimes people's opinions would get to me, but what, I, what I've been able to do is the length of time that it bothers me is really down to, I don't know, a couple of minutes, you know, right. maybe an hour, you know, if it's something really significant, maybe I'll be down and out for a day. But after that, no more than 24 hours am I really subscribing to anyone's BS, to be quite honest. And it's good because you actually have, have grown so much since then. And I, I, it was a quote that you that that I heard before is when you buy people's when you buy people's opinion, you buy people's lifestyle. And right. sometimes the lifestyle might look great on the outside, but I mean, there's so many movies that show flashy cars, flashy this, flashy this, no home life. Yeah. You know? And but just the yeah the line of work that I'm in, you know, I get to experience that a lot firsthand, right? You know, I get to meet a lot of affluent people, celebrities, and and things of that nature. But then you get down to it, bro. It's like, uh, you feel bad, you feel sorry and sad, right? Um, but one of these things that network marketing has brought to my life, it, not only the positivities, but it's brought this personal development, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's really uh, a personal development program with compensation attached right. to it, you know? And I really, I owe that completely to the network marketing industry. You know, no one was telling me to to read this or to, to listen to this. No one was doing that in my life until I came into network marketing. They, they literally held me by the hand and just poured in valuable information. Take this seminar, go to this course, and and some things had nothing to do with network marketing. Right. It just had completely to do with being a better person. Um, you know, not that I'm a, per, uh, a personal development junkie. You know, I know when to shift from learning mode to execution mode. Right. Um, but it is it is a key factor that everyone should be involved with uh, throughout their career. And no matter what business you're in, you need to have some level of coaching or personal development. You need someone that's not you to pour into you. Right. And, and, and so I, I saw Tim Grover not too long. A couple of years ago, I saw Tim Grover, and that was Kobe's coach and Michael's coach. But when I, when I read the book Relentless, I realized exactly what it was. It was like, you know what? These guys are different, and it's because they have a mentor and a coach and somebody to lean on. And, you know, your boss at your office is really not your coach. I mean, he can be. I mean, I work with great people, but you need to go outside of that to become something better than what you are. And if you're inside the box of that, then that's fine. Employees are great. I love employees. They, they, yeah. they work really hard. But to excel, to be something better, to, to write the legacy that you really want to write, you really need to get some personal development, find a coach, find a mentor, and you know, meet with them for real and, and really get out there. And this networking thing is, is, I mean, network marketing has brought so many people into my life. Um, before I got into network marketing, I was like, I'd love to have a millionaire that I could call. And it's funny because when you're in network marketing, you have multiple millionaires <laughs> that you can call and bounce ideas off them. And, and the frame of reference that you get, like even into my business that I have now, making calls to those network marketers, you're like, that's a great idea. I'm going to do it that way. Or that's a great idea. I'm going to do it that way. Or I definitely will not do it that way. So you know, get that, get that Rolodex. And for all of those guys out there that don't know what a Rolodex is, it's like your phone. <laughs> but back then we we'd do business cards and it'd roll and it'd spin and you'd find P and then you'd go to it. So a little it's funny, funny thing because I know a lot of people that listen to the podcast have no idea what a Rolodex is. It's not a Rolex, it's a Rolodex. Rolodex. 
Eric, that's so funny, man. But what you're saying is so spot on, bro. It's so absolutely true. You know, we're, we're blessed to be, you know, in these companies where we have significant people who are not only financially significant and, and doing great things, but again, to get to the spots that they've hit, they've had a grown, they had to have grown as an individual, mm -hmm. as a person, right? And to me, again, that's what I'm attracted to. I'm attracted to someone, an, an individual's growth or their ability to grow or their desire to grow. Those right. are the kind of people that's your avatar. Speaking, yeah and that's my that's my avatar it's all about growth you know and if you if you met me in person eric i'm a, I'm a really short guy you know uh so growth mentally is, is really is really important to me <laughs> <laughs> that's funny all right so i'm going to jump back into it so what are you working on right now right. where can the audience find you That's great. You know, so um, you chopped up a little bit there. Hopefully you can hear me okay still. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Uh, what am I working on and where can people find me? So uh, working on a bunch of things, you know, right now I'm in the process of getting ready to launch a course, a free course for network marketers on how to brand themselves, how to leverage social media and how to use automation to attract their who, to attract the right person into their business. Um, along with that, co co uh, that coaching and that training is going to come with a with a Facebook group as well, you know, so it's going to be building a community for me of the like-minded people to get all this education and learning for free, right? So for right now, they, all they have to do to find me is just go to, go to my Facebook page, man. It's, it's Fabian Brown or Fabian Antonio Brown, literally all over the internet, right? So if you just did a Google search for Fabian Brown or Fabian Antonio Brown, you, I'm going to be on that first page somewhere. And uh, connect with me online, man. Like, you know, I'm a pretty approachable person, right? Uh, sometimes the notifications do go crazy. So if I don't hit you back, you know, within 24 hours, don't get mad at me. The notifications are just a little bit stupid. Um, you know, in fact, I'm, I'm working on something to help me with, with that issue, with that problem. Um, but yeah, man, just find me online. Um, you know, love to connect with, with you guys there. And, um, you know, if you're interested in growing your, your business and using automation, using social media strategies, you know, well, check, check my, here's what I would suggest. Check my profiles out and see if what I'm doing online resonates with you. And if it does, then reach out to me. And if it doesn't, then I won't hear from you. And it's absolutely cool. <laughs> so I always do this. That's my oh, suggestion. Yes. That's funny. I, that, that, I like that. I always, I always do this for all my guests. So what I'm going to do is I'll actually make you a landing page. It'll have a quick snippet of what we do, what we talked about, a quick link right. to um, your Facebook page. And then I'll actually drop in the link for um, the course, the free course, because, you know, free awesome. course is fantastic. So I'll, I'll set that up for you. It'll all be taken care of. It'll be at www.burnflowmarketing.com forward slash Fabian. So so we'll be all set. Um, so you're the man, dude. I love it. Try to over deliver. I learned from Russell, man. Over deliver, over deliver. <laughs> and, 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 a, and a shout out to your audience, man. First of all, anyone who's listening to Eric and to his podcast, this guy is a savage. He's a monster. Don't let the smile and the nice kindness fool you guys, man. You know, through our mutual friend, he had the tenacity. He reached out to me. He set everything up. He is the leader's leaders. And if I, Eric, I gotta be honest with you, man. If I wasn't so committed in my company and my team, you, you are my, you are my ideal person, bro. You, you are the dude, right? You are the dude. So, um, for any of your listeners out there, man, you know, don't, don't take for granted, you know, what Eric is doing here. He's really curating, you know, leaders in this industry and getting them to share their deepest, dark secrets on how to win and you should have your pencil and your notebook out at all times for the podcast and follow him everywhere online and thank you thank you thank you so thank you for that that, that man that interject thanks for this <laughs> thanks for the knock on the smile man the facebook i mean the 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 listeners are fine because they don't see it all the time but when they catch it on the on the youtube channel i'm gonna be in trouble <laughs> Well, you know they're following you, dude. Yeah. You know, that's how this crazy thing goes, right? You start a podcast and they do a search for your name, and then all of a sudden they're following you on YouTube and your Instagram and your Facebook. That's why I love. That's why I love social media, man. If you're, if 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 you know, you know, like like Steve Larson says, you know, hello, the internet is here. Yeah. You know, if, if you guys aren't hip to the internet and leveraging it, you know, to build your business, you know, uh, you're you're silly, you know. And follow Eric for those tips. You know, catch on to some of my stuff for those tips, and you guys are going to be on your way. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. So the last question I'm going to ask you, uh, I used to ask a question about keeping, uh, keeping you up at night and I, I've actually transitioned to the, to a different question. Um, okay. Here's the, here's the picture. You're on stage. You're at 
Funnel Hacking Live, you're at your event, you're at an event where you're promoting yourself or your thing or who you are, what you do and how you do it. What is the mic drop question? What is the one thing that you want when everyone's done, you closed out the deal, you closed everything out, they're walking down the aisle, leaving the event. What is the one thing that you want them to remember about you? Hmm. First thing that comes to me, you got some good questions, man. <laughs> uh, the, first thing, the first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, guys, you know, I'm in four singles. I'm a father of 10 kids. If I can do it, what the hell's your problem? That would that would be that would be my question, man. You know, um, and and that's dude. I'm like you know. You hear people say I'm nobody special. Like I don't say that because I actually do think I am a special, unique, individual mm -hmm. person, right? Yeah. But but at the same time, it it's really possible for any of us, dude. I am not special in any stretch of the imagination of except where I took on circumstances that makes me feel good. So mm -hmm. if, if you find yourself struggling and you have a family of two or three or four even, just think about Fabian Brown and just think about how crazy this guy is to take on 10 kids and still get stuff done every single day. That's a huge nugget. Like that right there, because you, 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 you tied in the business, you tied in family, you tied in the pillars that basically you love and you like and that means so much to you. And man, I, I'm going to search a little bit more on your Facebook page to see all the kids because I want to see them all. And spend <laughs> life for, for doing what she does. 10 kids, that's crazy. I mean, I have seven. So youngest is 20, oldest is 30. So you got to catch up, bro. You got to catch up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got two grandbabies. I'm good with that. Grandbabies are coming. We're good with that. I love it. I love it. All right, man, we're coming to the end of the time. So I'm just going to say, I wanted to say thank you guys. And like I said, I will make a landing page for Fabian and it'll be www.burnfullmarketing.com forward slash Fabian. And guys, this is a, this is a huge nugget. Reach out to him. He's got some massive value. Um, we'll be working together. We'll be collaborating on a couple of other things. I'm sure this is, this is, the, this is the start of something awesome. And uh, guys, always, like I said, Listen to the full outro because I'm always giving something away for free. In fact, I'm dropping a brand new offer this week because we're working on a couple of new things. In fact, I think we're all three working on something that's super awesome and you guys will be stoked to hear it. It'll, you'll be able to find out more at www.burnphonemarketing.com. That's www.burnphonemarketing.com. So guys, thank you for, Fabian, thank you for coming on and we'll catch everybody on the next Burn Pool Marketing Radio Podcast. Are you tired of not getting Facebook interactions on your posts? Or if you do, it's people that are already on your team or people that are already in your business? Well, we've solved that problem. We created a system that helps you generate leads on autopilot, climb ranks, promote your services, sell more products, and become a leader effortlessly without spamming your friends and family ever. So take our free five-day course, go to www.burntphonebots.com and click the link and we will see you on the other side. Again, that's www.burntphonebots.com. All right, guys, see you on the training.